Hey guys, my name is Marta, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be sharing with you the first episode in my Discovering Victorian Drama series. This is a series of videos that I am starting this October in which I am going to be reading plays by Victorian authors that aren't either Bernard Shaw nor Oscar Wilde, since those two playwrights are the ones that we usually think about when we think about Victorian drama. And the first playwright whose plays I am going to be reviewing today is none other than Henry Arthur Jones, who was actually a contemporary of Wilde and Shaw. Arthur Jones was a playwright whose first plays died from the mid to late 19th century and in fact he continued to write during the first years of the 20th century. His first plays belonged to the Victorian tradition of melodrama, which was the genre that was the most popular at the time, but he eventually started to write comedies in which he dealt with more serious contemporary themes. The first play in this through in this collection is in fact a melodrama and it is none other than The Silver King which was first performed in 1882 and as any melodrama this play is very plot driven and its story is not very original. In fact it includes a lot of tropes and plot and plot devices that, that were featured in a lot of other melodramas but despite that the popularity of the genre made him become very successful because of it. The Silver King is the story of this man who gets accused of committing a murder that he actually has not committed and who has to run away avoid, in order to avoid getting caught and put into prison. He later on comes back disguised as the Silver King so no one knows who he is and at the very end of the play, as you can expect, everything gets resolved, the bad guys and the true murders get into prison, he is able to rejoin his family which had had to live under poverty after he ran away. It's a very ridiculous plot with, with a lot of songs and song parts and which effect doesn't really shine through when you read them since they were meant to be performed but which in a way highlight the comedic aspect of the play. The characters despite being mostly tropey are very funny and ridiculous and I overall really enjoyed how crazy each person that was featured was and how despite the characters being mere tropes you could really set each other apart. I also really enjoyed how surreal some things were and I of course really enjoyed how stupid each character was, especially when it comes to the criminals, a cast of characters that I found to be very hilarious. I would say that I recommend Within the Silver King if you want to get a taste of melodrama. As I said, it's a play that features a lot of tropes that were featured in this type of play. In fact, the criminal who's not a criminal and has to come back was a trope that was very well used and which was not original at all. And it, I think that it is fun enough for everyone to be able to enjoy it. Now, moving on to the second play, The Case of the Rebellious Susan. This play was performed in 1894 and it is not a melodrama but a comedy. This play, as the title indicates, really deals with the situation of women inside a marriage and their liberties they did not have inside it. In fact, the play deals with our main character, Susan, who after finding out that her husband had cheated on her wants to run away and have an affair of her own. It's a book that really discusses the very different views on women that people had. In fact, you really get to see how Susan's view on marriage contrasts with that of her father and with that of her husband. It's a play that is very hilarious but that under its comedic surface there is this more deep discussion on women 
and the role in a marriage. You can really see how controlling male were in the society. The play really highlights the role that women had and you really get to see how they were supposed to be the people who had to fix their husbands and to keep them under control. In fact, that is something that Susan gets told a lot of times. It's a play that I would say really defines how gender roles were established and how women really try to fight to get out of them. In fact, the mere title of the play suggests that something as simple as trying to run away from one's marriage was seen as a rebellious act. This is a play that reminded me a lot of Shaw's plays, especially to Candida, which I read this summer. And I would say that if you like Shaw's drama, you will really, really enjoy The Case of Rebellious Susan, and I really suggest you read it. It's a play in which, in contrast to his other one, in terms of the character's personality traits, which you can see are more developed and more complex. And in a similar line to that of the case of Rebellious Susan, The Liars, which was the third and last play featured in this collection, which was performed in 1897, it's a play that also deals with similar themes. The Liars is a play that deals with a women's position inside a marriage and with her relationships with her husband and the treatment they got from them. It's a play that really shows a woman's dissatisfaction and it's a play that really shines because of the women banter that gets established between our main protagonist Lady Jessica and her female friends. This is a play that is really, really hilarious. It's very, very funny and there is this huge mess that gets established after the characters start creating this big lie. It's a play that reminded me a lot of the importance of being earnest by Oscar Wilde and I think it's a play that you will really enjoy if you like Oscar Wilde's plays in general. It's a play that has a huge cast of characters but in which each character is easily distinguishable from each other. It's a play that really shows the complexities of marriage and it's a play that really talks about gender roles inside a marriage. It's a play in which you really get to see how a marriage worked and how a marriage did not work. It's a play that really shows how husbands were the ones who said what had to be done and it's a play that really shows how homely a female's life was supposed to be in this time period. It's a play that I really, really enjoyed. In fact, it's one that I am hoping to reread. And I really recommend not only for its discussion, but, only, but also for its comedic aspect, which I have already mentioned and which I have to highlight because I simply adored it. Now, overall, and in more general terms, what do I have to say about Henry Arthur Young's drama? I would have to say that I really enjoy his style. I like how hilarious he is. I like how he discusses similar themes as that of Oscar Wilde and Bernard Shaw. And I really enjoy getting a taste of I also really enjoy his characterization. And I also really enjoyed how as other playwrights from this time period he managed to include serious themes inside a comedy. I would say that I do recommend you read Arthur Young's plays if you are intrigued by Victorian drama. I think he was a very talented playwright, not only in his later plays, which I really, really enjoyed, as you can see, but also in his melodramatic ones. I really enjoyed The Silver King, even though it was more basic to classify it in modern terms. And um, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I gave, I gave the entire collection four stars, and I think every single play would also be a four stars read. So yeah, I am very happy I got introduced to this playwright, thanks to Victor. 
Um, I cannot wait to discover more Victorian playwrights as the month goes on. I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ho comment down below if you've read any of Arthur Young's plays. And uh, if you have, which one is your favorite? Comment down below which who are your favorite Victorian playwrights. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. And I hope your day is going to be amazing. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!